Hello, I'm Roger Payne, a biologist who spent most of my life studying whales and working for their conservation. I believe that the current human predicament stems in major part from failing to value highly enough the beauty of life on Earth. But having these lovely images of whales underline my words, I'm hoping that their unequaled beauty will express to you what I am trying, but with less effect, to convey. Some years ago, I tried to discover what the most consequential scientific discovery of the past hundred years might be. Not the most interesting or groovy or gee whiz discovery, the most consequential discovery. As I soon realized, the discoveries that generate declarations of deepest concern are not the most consequential discoveries. The most consequential scientific discovery is not E equals MC squared and the nuclear weapons it enabled. It is not what knowledge of the structure of DNA and later of the human genome will enable once those discoveries are misapplied wholesale. And it's not the threat of computers becoming autonomous and eventually outmaneuvering humanity. And it's not even the threat of global warming. The most consequential discovery is a seemingly harmless thing, a discovery we treat as a somewhat interesting fact or just ignore. It is that every species, ours included, interdepends for its survival with a host of other species, each of which interdepends with an overlapping but slightly different species group. We cannot even name most of the life forms on which we depend, and in only a handful of cases do we know the service any given species performs, and still less, about the chains of consequence of which it is but one link. Yet it is that complex web of species, of which we are but one, that keeps this planet habitable for life and for us. Which means that once we bring enough of all the critical species, which we cannot even name, to extinction, we will have marked the beginning of the end for Homo sapiens. Another way to look at the consequences of knowing that life is a multi-layered interdependency is to realize that there is no such thing and can be no such thing as a species, ours included, that can endure for very long without the help of many other species, probably thousands of other species, which, don't forget, oh my best beloved, we cannot even name. Faced with such ignorance, our only hope is to preserve as many species as possible and to make the primary measure of all our actions whether they also promote non-human life and to accept that all other considerations are secondary. And please don't even hope that technology can save us much too expensive. Maybe it will in a couple of cases, but we're talking about a need to keep the whole planet alive not some finite region like a mere continent or two. Besides, losing some species will release cascading effects as other species are affected and go extinct, because some that are lost are bound to be ones that serve some essential role. The reason we find ourselves in this present crisis is because we have always put the needs of humans before the needs of the rest of life. That is our big mistake, our universal blindness, our fatal flaw. I am hoping the beauty of whales helps inspire you to join me in taking a simple pledge today that henceforth we will put nature first, shape all our actions and thoughts towards that goal, seek to make all that we do serve not just us, but all life. From such a resolution, we can build a mighty fortress, a resolute state of mind that will celebrate the fact that we are all part of life, all part of a universal we. Such a pledge may seem an indirect path to such a major goal, but indirect paths often lead to great and unexpected destinations and achievements. As Antoine de Saint-Exupéry said, if you want to build a ship, don't drum up the men to gather wood, divide up the work, and give orders. Instead, teach them to yearn for the vast and endless sea. Many whales teach us all to yearn for a world in which there is a universal we.